body. I, I don't want, and I'm not perfect. <laughs> you know, I do unhealthy things. I'm overweight. I want to lose weight. I'm overweight. That's not healthy. But this was the kind of thing where smoking, you're involving other people. I have to breathe the same air you're breathing. You know? So, that bothered me a lot. It, you couldn't walk anywhere on campus without smelling that, just about. Like, there are smoking sections every 10 feet. It, it was ridiculous. But, um, uh, so I'm standing in the line to get on the bus to go to Walmart. And I called my mom, because I'm just furious about the smoking, and she wasn't happy about it either. I told her about it. She didn't, never wanted us exposed to anything like that, and she was very, you know, she was a good, she is a good mom. She was careful how she, what she exposed us to, physically, emotionally, mentally, all those things. So she wasn't happy about me being exposed to cigarettes, smoke. So, um, I call her and I'm complaining about it. And she didn't want me to go to job court. My dad did, because he thought it'd be good for me and I could grow up and all that. But I call her and I'm talking to her about it. And she's like, I wish you'd come home. She told me that every time I talked to her. She's like, you could go to college. You could get your good job, part-time job, and go to college. I had every intention of going to college. Like I said, I was going to go to advanced training. I had every intention of going back. I graduated high school at 22 credit hours in college. I dual enrolled. So I already had college. Aside from freshman year. But, um, I never any intention of going. Because I want to be a physical therapist. You have to have a degree to get that. You know, to be a physical therapist. You can't have any less than a master's or a doctorate. I knew I was going to have to go to college. But I just thought this would help. And, so I'm on the phone with her. Waiting to get, in, you know, to get on the bus. And she's saying this. And, all of a sudden I just, it's like... I don't want to be here anymore. I'm through. I'm finished. I mean, like, when I say I'm done, I'm done. It's like this, like someone flipped a switch in my brain. I'm done. I don't want to hear the reasons why I should stay. I'm finished. I'm done. I've weighed all options. I'm a deep thinker. Okay, I'm not saying, again, I'm not saying I'm perfect or that I'm better than anyone, it's not like that, but this is one of my strengths that I look as, as something that I like about myself. I'm a deep thinker. Before I go into something, I generally, you know, at this moment I'm talking to my mom and that light bulb goes on. I don't have to be here anymore. I don't have to put up with this. I can be at home in my own bed with my family. I don't have to put up with this crap anymore. I'm going to get on the plane, and I'm going home. I'm, I'm finished. I'm done. And so I told my mom, I said, okay. I'm going to talk to them tomorrow about going home. See if I can come home in the next few days. I hadn't seen my parents in three months. That was a long time. Being in this place, this was like boot camp. This wasn't like college. I, I'd go two months without seeing them, maximum. But I had... I had the opportunity, if I wanted to go home on the weekends, I could go. This was Kentucky. I'm talking hundreds of miles away. It wasn't, it would have taken them a while to drive up there. Plane tickets are too expensive. So I'm riding to Walmart this whole way. I'm thinking, I'm going home. I could not keep the smile off my face. I was so excited. I was going home. So I go in and I talk to him. I don't remember the whole, all of the stuff I did, but I tell him. You know, I told my my RA, I'm leaving. I'm going home. I'm done. I, I don't want to be here anymore. And I told several of the students there that I was going home. And they say, oh, well, you have to put in a two weeks notice. I'm like, 
Wait, I have to do that? Yeah, you have to do that. I'm like, hold on, hold on, hold on. That was in the contract. That you could go home. You know, you didn't have to stay. You were not stuck there. You could go home. I had, like, a nervous breakdown. I am not kidding. Throughout this two weeks, I had a nervous breakdown. I got depressed, like, when they, I found out that I was not going to be able to go home. I called my parents, like, in five minutes, telling them what the people said, you know. I talked to all, I went around, and I told one day, one day I, um, another thing. I got sick three times when I was there. Colds, stomach aches, you name it. Okay, I was sick a lot. One was stress and being uncomfortable and all that. But unless you had a fever, they wouldn't let you stay in the clinic. So that made me mad. So I was already pissed off because I was sick. I just wanted to lay down. I was already tired. I never got enough sleep. I told him I wasn't getting enough sleep. My roommate, the one one of my roommates, just absolutely didn't like me. Don't know why. She just didn't like me. She would talk about, I mean, whisper under her breath. I didn't do anything to her to make her not like me. I just figured, okay, this is obviously a misunderstanding because I don't feel that way about you. She was our room captain. But she didn't like me. Well, she didn't like to hear music at night. I'm a light sleeper. Is if any more, you know, than a pin drops, somebody walks in the room, I wake up. All you gotta do is quietly open the door and walk in and I wake up. Unless I'm in a real deep sleep generally I'll wake up. So her playing her music was not working for me. And because I have SAD, I didn't want to tell her that. It was very hard for me to tell her that. If I wanted to, I, I would sit, I sat there some nights and she's playing her music and I cried. Because I could not do something as simple as lean up and say, could you please turn your music off because I'm trying to sleep. That's all I had to say. A sentence. I could not do it. And I know those of you that have SA D. <laughs> Some people call it SA. Um those of you that have social anxiety know that sometimes you get these things. I don't know if everyone does get this, but it can be something as simple as sitting in a restaurant and you want to get up and get a napkin. And you cannot do it. You are paralyzed. Like your legs, your brain will not tell your legs to stand up. It's like, you can't do it. It's like you're paralyzed with fear. But this was one of those things. And it was so frustrating and it just made me so angry. And of course she got mad because she said I was a snitch. I had never in my life been called a snitch until I went to job board. Never. And of course, that's a judgmental word. That's tattletale, you tell on people, you think you're better than me, etc. It's a judgmental word, so that bothered me a lot. It caused a lot of anxiety. She called me a snitch. And she would talk to my other roommates about me as I'm sitting next to her. Sitting next to her, and she's talking across the room to my roommate about me. Could I say anything? No. I just sat there and took it. I'd make nasty little faces at her, but that was about it. She was mad because I went to the authority instead of her. But what she didn't understand was I wasn't able to go to her. I wanted to. It wouldn't have mattered. She said it would have reacted the same way. But that was my one of my first problems there. Was that and the fact that they were so controlling. Don't remember how I got off on that. But, uh, so... She was gone when I left. She had been gone a few months. But I had a whole new roommates. But um, 